Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm. from the great state of Michigan. Now you know, you know, Mitt Romney, he saw the same crisis, and you know what he said, let Detroit go bankrupt. Now sure, sure, Mitt Romney loves our lakes and our trees. He loves our cars so much they even have their own elevator. But the people who design and build and sell those cars, well, in Romney's world, the cars get the elevator and the workers get the shaft. Chris, I don't want the shaft, but uh, I do love our lakes and trees. I love fucking... I was almost going to say I love the shaft. Oh, well. Wow. You could have said that. Sure. Well. But in Romney's world, I guess you'd be getting lots of shaft. I, I guess you're right. Which, you know, we have the options, I guess. That's America. Freedom of choice. But wasn't she lovely, Brian? Just fucking fabulous. That was Jennifer Granholm. That was Granholm, at the Democratic right? National Convention. Yeah. Which is a little outdated now. I mean, we've been away for a little while. Well, I've been away for two weeks. Yeah. Brian. I know. I know no one killed themselves about it. We're going to be okay. No, well, you know, my uh, fuck buddy got pregnant. Yes, so I That's been a fiasco for the last fucking two weeks. Two weeks. Tell you. We're all dying to know the update of that. Well, I'm just going to save that for these weeks. weeks. Let's just say she's not going to the abortion clinic. She's not going. Where is she going? I don't know, but I know a back alley. Ooh. Mm-hmm. The Come alternative? The yeah. Yeah, okay. You ever see the uh, HBO miniseries, If These Walls Could Talk? No, I have not. It was pretty crazy. It was all about abortion and abortion rights. Not abortion rights, but it was pro-abortion. Was the uh, Ben Fold 5 song Brick ever in one of those episodes? That's sick. <laughs> it, would, it just seems fitting. Well, I don't. first of all, how does that sound go? How does what? Brick. Um, I don't know. Anyway... Check that movie out, guys. Um, what did I say it was? If These Walls Could Talk. He remembered. Not Good. a movie, a miniseries. It's a miniseries slash movie, I don't know. Shares in it, I remember uh, there's a Demi Moore skit. It's but it's like, it's uh, three different stories and they intertwine them. Dealing with abortion. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy. It's pretty sick. Let's just say Demi Moore dies. Does she? Okay, well, spoiler, spoiler alert, alert everyone. But I'm not going to tell you about the mess. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Moving along. Anyway, Brian, what a week. What a fucking two weeks I've had. How was your week? My week was, it was all right. Was busy. Yeah, well, what, what'd you do? Yeah, you said it's been a glorious two weeks. <laughs> I didn't say glorious. All right. Oh, well, hey, everybody. How have you been? What's been going on? It's been a crazy week for me. It's been two weeks. Yep. Uh, um, it's been two weeks. Well, it's been two weeks for me, too. Yeah, I guess it has been. I Since episode five. Uh, episode 5? Episode 5 was the last episode we did. The time flies. Yes, it does. Two weeks. So much has happened. He knocked on the door. I'm like, shit. Who knocked on the door? Who knocked on my door? Today. Yeah. Oh, yes, today. I was like, well. Anyway, so. Uh, contractual obligations. What does that mean? It means we had to do the show today. Or else. I don't really I thought you were talking about my fuck buddy who was pregnant. Oh, yes. Well, you said. You knew a back alley. <laughs> oh, we did talk about that. <laughs> Which is terrible. Okay. It's not terrible. <laughs> if you live in the South. Oh, it's yes. Hard to find an abortion anywhere. Chris, speaking of the South, that should lead us into everyone's, well, it's debatable what everyone's favorite segment is, but it's... Headlines? It's headlines. Oh, yeah. It is. Fun fact and funny story. Back to news. Let's talk about the news. 
So, Chris, you said this week you were taking me on a trip to the south. Yeah, we're going to go to the south. Um, Brian, have you ever been to the south? Uh, I've been to Florida. Okay, you've been to Florida. Where else have you been? I've been to... where else? Nope. I went to Washington, D.C., so I was kind of in Virginia. Well, have you ever been to Washington, D.C.? Yeah, I've been there twice. That's not the south. Well, I know, but it's have right on the border been... of Virginia, and Virginia's part of the south. Oh, okay. Anyways. I was born in Oklahoma City, did you know that? You've told me that before, yes. Have I said that on the show? I don't think you have said that on the show. Yep. So you're a uh, Confederate by birth. Unfortunately, well, I'm not unfortunately. Well, well it's hard to answer uh, that question. I'm proud, but I'm not. But yeah, I'm a son of the South. All right, so you're taking us on a trip down South this week. Yeah, have you ever been to Kentucky? No, we've gone over this. Oh. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk about this restaurant in Kentucky. Apparently, Brian, Kentucky restaurant was shut down after roadkill was found in the kitchen. After a roadkill was found in the kitchen. I'm not making this up. A roadkill was found in the kitchen. Of a Kentucky diner. Of a Kentucky diner. So you've never been to Kentucky then? Nope. You've never been to Williamsburg. So far the story's not making me want to go any more than I... I thought you told me you've been to Bush Gardens in West Virginia. No, I went to Bush Gardens in Tampa. So you've been to the South. I said Florida. Oh, I missed that part. You said instead of Florida. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, so a customer at the, I, it says here, the Red Flower Chinese Restaurant in Williamsburg, Kentucky, they, uh, they alerted authorities after they spotted something they probably wish they had it, Brian. Oh, no. Do you know what they spotted? I'm guessing roadkill. I don't know what kind, though. This is what they spotted. They spotted restaurant employees wheeling roadkill back into the kitchen. <laughs> Okay, Brian? Okay. Our uh, local affiliates over at CBS WYMT interviewed the witnesses, and uh, the roadkill was apparently a deer stuffed into a trash can. Oh okay? Uh, so it was like a deer that got hit on the road. They scooped it up, put it in a trash bag, and brought it to the restaurant. Oh, God. That's what I'm guessing, unless they got this fucking restaurant in the middle of the forest, and like deer just... Jeez, can you imagine, being, them out. Can you imagine being told by your boss to go do that? He was oh, come, come here, come here. You all go out to the road and get the road. Take the shovel and scoop it in the bag, huh? I was thinking more. Listen, Cletus, we gotta go. We're running low on deer meat. We want to feature deer meat this week. Oh, yeah, it's, a, it's the Red Flower Chinese restaurant. It's not the... Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I was trying. That's my Chinese. Okay, accent. well then go back to it, cause. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you go out to the street. You bring in the deer. We we put it on our buffet. We serve it as general style. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And it's good. It doesn't matter. It's, it got hit by a car. <laughs> Whatever. If anything, you got a little bit of rubber, maybe a little fender. Oh, jeez. You just pick that shit out. No one knows. If it tastes good, eat it. What was that you were story saying goes, about being the son of the South? What? <laughs> <laughs> you sick. I guess I'm sick. Anyway. Anyway, when this said, quote, there was actually a blood trail, Brian. Oh, my God. Oh, stop. I'm serious. There was a blood trail they were mopping up behind, repeat, behind the garbage can. Okay? There was so much I'm speechless kill. here. There was a blood trail. Who... Oh, my God. Can you can you imagine just seeing this? Being the one to see it and report it? <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey, let's take the kids out to the Chinese restaurant. Daddy, let's go to Red Flower Chinese <laughs> Restaurant. It's my favorite place in the whole world. Oh, my oh, God. What are they doing? Oh, Mom, look. What are they doing over there? <laughs> oh, no. A deer in a trash bag. Which was what? the blood trail that they were having employees <laughs> mop right. up. Boy, this is not good for Chinese restaurant stereotypes. Well, anyway, um, customer uh, Katie Hopkins said there was like a tail and like a foot and a leg sticking out of the garbage can. Was she saying the likes? Like a tail? Like... No, I'm serious. Like, this is a direct quote. There was like a tail and like a foot and leg sticking out of the garbage can. And I'm not making this up. I'm reading it from the headline. I hate to be Grandpa Brian, but... Hey, I'm Kay Hopkins, and, like, guys, there was tails and, like, foot and legs sticking out of the garbage can. People and they wheeled it straight back into the kitchen. Overdo the likes these days. It, Why? It is really annoying. I don't know. I've even caught myself doing it. Why do we add like to stuff all the time? Well, it's Kentucky. 
Well, I mean, people everywhere do it. Like Kentucky, I think I just said it. I think I just did one. What's that? Say that again. I think like, even... I really don't think you like know what you're talking about because, like, seriously. No, like I think I do because seriously, like I notice this stuff. I, okay. See? Yeah, I like that. People do it just without even thinking about it. It's like really weird when you stop and really think about like how many times you. Anyway, so like the local health inspector, thank God, Paul Larson was called in to investigate. Lawson said the restaurant owners told him they didn't know that they were doing anything wrong. <laughs> oh, we did not know. We did not know we were doing anything wrong. We had no clue. Hello? We tied you down with Saba. We put spices and just one sauce and a soy sauce. And we take our crab of goon. Oh, my God. And our crab. Oh, oh. We've, anyway. Well, we've just lost the Asian demographic. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> so, yeah, dude, they're just. Serving up. The owner said he didn't plan to serve the deer to customers. Instead, instead, he planned on to serve it to his family. <laughs> That's an awesome excuse. No, no. We feed the American high grade beef. <laughs> I feed my family deer. Oh, roadkill deer. <laughs> We're doing nothing wrong here. No, yeah. Jokes on you. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> Me Chinese. Me play joke. <laughs> Meefy American roadkill. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. All right, moving along. All right. So yeah, that's a true story, guys. So stay away if you're in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Stay away from the Red Flower Chinese restaurant if it ever uh, reopens. And if it does reopen, they have dine in and take out, and you can call them at five four five eight 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 five. Brian. Oh wow. Okay. Then. So if you want some. Come up and request some roadkill deer. Sloppy possum sandwich. No problem. You want some buffalo skunk? They got it. Oh, uh, could we call them up and ask for that right now? Yes, we could call them and ask them if we, <laughs> we could get some venison. So, no. I was wondering if you're serving buck fried rice. You got any possum fried rice? Do you have venison fried rice? Sweet and sour squirrel. Um, headlines, headlines, my favorite lies. <laughs> I guess since we're on our way to the south, we might as well stop over to uh, Alabama. 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 Greenbow, Alabama. Old time. Oh. Hey, I'm Cletus. And Jethro. And what we're going to talk about. Alabama. Alabama. Alabama football. Now what? Alabama man pleads guilty to obscenity for sexual taunting LSU fan in video after BCS game. Cletus. Wait. Uh, what's your name again, Jeff? Wait. I'm going back to Brian here. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he was sexually taunting him? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, I guess, Brian, do you know what a, uh, what is that? A tea bag? Yes, I do know what that is. Uh, Brian, tell me what a tea bag is because, I, I mean, I like. Um, I think I've seen things, but I've never heard of a. Well, I don't know. I'm sure. I, come on, you know what a tea bag is? Tea bagging. I drink tea, yeah. So I guess it's when you dip your tea bag into a hot mug of water, right? <laughs> kind of. It's when you take your testicles and you drop them on someone, preferably their face, if you really want to call it tea bagging. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, is that not what it is? I, I've, I've never done that. <laughs> I've never dropped my balls into someone's mouth. I didn't, anyway, I didn't accuse you of doing it. I'm just let's move on. Let's move it along. Uh, the story comes out of New Orleans. Actually, a Alabama man pleaded guilty Tuesday to obscenity charges and faces Brian a two-year prison sentence for uh, um, wow, rubbing his genitals <laughs> on a unconscious, repeat, unconscious LSU fan <laughs> in a Bourbon Street restaurant after. The BCS national title game in January. Oh my god. So I guess they must have been watching the game in some restaurant. It, right? uh, he's it, like, Alabama football rules! And he's. Got roll tie, or was it? Tea bag? Roll you think he was yelling that while he was rubbing his ball around his face? Roll tie? Roll tie, roll tie! Is that what that means? I still don't know what roll tie means. I don't really know either. Well, that's, that's a southern thing, I guess. Yeah, you should be telling me. Be my dear now, be! So, uh, I guess the prosecutors reached a plea deal with uh, Brian H. Downey, 
of uh, Smith Station, Alabama. Um, on the morning, he was scheduled to be tried on charges that included sexual battery. I guess when you teabag someone, it's uh, sexual battery. Yeah, well... That's punishable, Brian, up to 10 years in prison. So the next time you teabag anybody, fuckers, remember, that's 10 years in prison. It's rape. It's fucking sexual battery. Yep. Speaking of rape, you know legitimate? You know the female body, Brian, has yes. uh, mechanisms that lets them know that if it's not a legitimate rape or not. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. That's right, because... If it's not a legitimate rape, she's not going to get pregnant. Exactly. It's right. like the Starship Enterprise. Red alert, yeah, green alert, red alert, yellow alert. It's a terror level. What terror <laughs> level color are we on? Yellow alert. It's just a tip. <laughs> Everything's gentle here. There's no screaming yet. This is unlegitimate. <laughs> horrible. It's unlegitimate. This is not fun. Todd Aiken. But you know what? Senator Tom Aiken started this. We're just playing with it. If it's a legitimate rape, uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. Yeah, so yeah. I guess Football charges fans. were dropped. They were dropped completely? Yeah. Uh, prosecutors agreed to drop the battery charge. Really? Yeah. Do you think you could get a civil suit out of that? <laughs> Try- Definitely. <laughs> Try- what if you had, like, crabs, man? You got crabs all over your fucking tongue and mouth Face. and lips. Ugh. So anyway, Downing is scheduled to be formally sentenced on November 29th, but or- Orleans Parish Criminal District Judge Karen Harmon figured... <laughs> She's probably some feminist bulldog bitch. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Holy cow. Yes, yes. Uh, Judge Karen Herman. He's on a roll, folks. Indicated she will sentence Downey to two years in prison and recommended his participation in a boot camp program run by prison officials. Jeez. You know what that means? You're getting fucked. <laughs> He's going to be teabagged all the time, man. <laughs> You're not making license plates, dude. You're getting fucked in the ass. This just became a episode of Sally Jesse Raphael. They just brought out the drill sergeants to teach this guy a lesson. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Dropping your balls on some other football fan's face. He's just he's out of control. He's out of control. He's dipping balls in face. Jesse, I just don't know what to do. Obviously, Brian, this bitch Karen thinks she's clever. I guess so. And you know what? I shouldn't be calling her on her a bitch, but... Yeah, well... Anyway, so he's going to boot camp, run by prison officials. Downey will not be required, though... This is a good thing. He will not be required to register as a sexual offender. Why? Yeah, right? I bet you... Man. That's disgusting. So apparently it's a free pass. If you guys want to sexually offend somebody... Well, as long as you're teabagging them. You can teabag them. After a football game... Don't rape little boys... Teabag them. Yes. If your football team wins, teabag a fan of the other team. You're yeah. going to be okay. You'll get arrested, but you'll get off. Mom, Uncle Joey came over and said his favorite team won. And guess what we did? <laughs> did you teabag him, honey? What? Speaking of little kids. He called it cock gobbling. <laughs> <laughs> no, speaking of little kids. Speaking of little kids. Speaking of little kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brian, um, do you like a good brawl? Um, in a, a good man, a mano y mano, an equal fight. Yeah, in a controlled environment, you know. What if I told you in New York City, a gym teacher claims that a six-year-old student beat him the fuck up? I would say, what does this teacher, I mean, what does this teacher look like? First of all, this teacher, let me just close your eyes, everyone, and just visualize Adrian Peterson, stocky, with 200 pounds of uh, fat. Really? He's that Black big? Black pole. He's that big? That big dude, little fucking shit. They call him the tiny terror. He's four foot two. Apparently, beat the shit out of this fucking five foot ten, two hundred twenty pound gym teacher. Well, what's the story? Read the story. All right. Well, okay. In New York, a five foot ten, as I was saying, two hundred twenty pound. Hate repeating myself. Gym teacher John Webster. Well, I guess he's not a slight figure. But the former, oh, he's a former college football player, claims a 50-pound six-year-old student physically assaulted him and sent him into therapy, Brian. <laughs> Does yeah. it say what the dispute was over? A was... college football player claims that a little shit sent him to the dispute. Um, well, let me see. The New York Post reports that Webster fractured his ankle. That was a fair ball, coach. They're playing kickball. Well, it was a fair ball. They might have been playing soccer because it's a little Latino boy. 
A four foot two Rodrigo Carprio. Oh, let's do the fight intro. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen coming, coming from, from New, York New York City, 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 City weighing way, 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 220 way, pounds, way, pounds way, at five foot ten, he is the gym teacher, John Webster. And his opponent, his opponent, his opponent, swimming all the way from Puerto Rico, Rico, the tiny Terra. So yeah, dude. I guess Webster says it's sort of like an angel demon sort of thing. What does that even mean? <laughs> Webster 27, mind you. Yeah, it's like a little angel devil demon kind of thing. Well, let me tell this you, kid Webster just came up and just kicked my ass. Kids, kids are shit, man. Especially the ones that swim all the way from Puerto Rico. What is he? Puerto Rico. What did he do? Did he kick him in the knee or did he punch him? So Webster 27 said, uh, Avery Rico, the boy looks like an angel, but then all of a sudden that halo turns into horns. <laughs> okay? Okay. It's a nightmare. It's, it's, it's embarrassing. It's humiliating, he says. Humiliating. I can't even talk anymore. So you can't just restrain? <laughs> <laughs> You've got too over the edge with all the voices. He's been on a roll. And, and there's reportedly more than just the incident with Webster. I, apparently, Rodrigo, uh, a first grader at PS330 in Queens. <laughs> Stay away from that if you guys are in that yeah, district. Right? Don't substitute at that school. A little fucking chihuahua running around, a little ankle biter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my knee! Oh, my knee! Oh, my knee! My knee. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess also allegedly kicked the school principal and pinched several other individuals, including Brian, a school security officer. <laughs> he went after a school security officer? Yeah. Jeez. Dude, once they jumped the border. Is this like uh, Bam Bam from the Flintstones? Yeah. He's just got like crazy strength. He's a little kid with just insane strength. Stand and deliver. Wow. <laughs> Webster told the Post that the confrontation started when he was escorting several students to the school cafeteria. Uh, quote, he tried to hold his wrists and he began biting me, Webster said. I took him to the principal office and he kicked me in the ankle. <laughs> oh, jeez. And one kick landed right on my knee. I felt it pop, Webster says. Wow. Why didn't you just restrain this kid? Just put your hand on his head. Uh, you know what I would have done, dude? I will just drop kick that little motherfucker. <laughs> you come on, no, you can't. He's five foot fucking two. Yeah, but then you're gonna be fired. No, no one's not serious. Man. Yeah, they are. Everything's videotaped nowadays. You know that. There's cameras everywhere in schools. So you're telling me after some little shit's attacking the fuck out of you, and he's breaking skin, you're bleeding, your fucking knees are popping, you can't fucking take him out. You know, even still after that, just oh man, whatever. This kid, right. uh, watch out for this kid in the future. MMA, Dana White, be looking here. Well, if he even makes it that far, dude, lawyers are after him. Lawyer Andrew Sieben, who is representing Webster, described Rodrigo as a tiny tear. Um, is he suing this kid? Let me finish. Okay. <laughs> sorry. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You um, did, you. <laughs> uh, the lawyer said it's sad that teachers like Mr. Webster are not offered protection from someone who can uh, endanger other teachers and students. Hmm. It's true, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, what are you going to do with him? He's six. You know, what's he going to do next? Is what fucking bring 9mm in his backpack? Well, he's... I don't know. I would say he's I six, but apparently he's beating up adults at six, so who knows? This little shit isn't going to go to school. He needs to be fucking euthanized. It's the curious case of Rodrigo Caprio. Rodrigo. Rodrigo. Um, however, though, however, Brian Rodrigo's parents says the allegations are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> These lawsuits are totally absurd. So, back and forth, back and forth. Anyway, um... <laughs> yeah. no, you guys have to see this guy. I'm going to put a picture up on the YouTube. Okay. They got to see a picture of this guy. <laughs> we got to do, like, a split screen. But, you know, the, the mom is saying... This is, this is a terrible thing to say about a child. Yeah, and you're going to try to go out in a civil suit, a six-year-old beat you up, really? If I was a judge, I would laugh and tell him to quit wasting my time. 
Honestly, this last week was totally absurd, the boy father said, whose name is Jorge. <laughs> How could my little boy do so much damage? Okay? It is ridiculous. How could my little boy do so much damage, okay? Moving on. All right. What do we got? What do we got, Brian? Well, we've got through the headlines, Chris. Um, yeah, gee, it seems we like got... this is um, quick. Well, Have we missed is... anything? Do we got? Yeah, well, but this is going to come as a surprise for you. What is that? We have a new... I don't, you know, I don't like surprises. I think you do. We have a new intro song for our Gallup section what? of the show. We have a new intro song? Yep. yep. It's the election music. No. Mid-Med style. It's a legitimate rape. Uh, the female body has ways to try to shut that whole thing down. President Obama supported the uprising, correct? I gotta go back and see. Got all this stuff twirling around here. Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. The time has changed for Trump. Speak softly and carry a big stick. End of quote. I promise you, the president has a big stick. Well, we're going to have to hang the Obama misery index around his neck. (laughs) I'll tell you what. (laughs) If if this is what Mitt Romney wants the Republican Party, he got it. He got it today. Michigan! All right, so Chris, uh, normally this is the time that we do Gallup. Let me say something first. Okay. That was awesome. Yeah, I thought so too. We did put that together. We did. We worked pretty hard on that. We're going to do something a little different this time. Normally this is where we do our Gallup section and we check in on the presidential polls. Yeah, we do. Well. Sometimes it's depressing because it goes up and down, down and up, and I see my favorite candidate, which I won't tell anyone who it is. I see him. Gosh, I just don't want to say anything because I don't want no one to know, but it's, just, it's really frustrating. Okay. <laughs> the segment just really stresses the fuck out of me. I'd rather just be blindfolded. Well, we do that for the interview later. I know. I just... I don't know. Well, Chris, what do you got for me? Yeah, I mean, you've been kind of depressed like this, so I went uh, I went and I got us a special guest. I don't like special guests, especially if the spotlight's off me. No, no. I think you'll like this guest. Mm-mm. He's back, for those of you who heard episode one. We brought in... You don't... No, he hates my guts! Well, he's coming, Chris. He's already here. I don't believe it. I don't fucking Retired. Believe it. Well, it's good to have him back, Congressman Barney Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, so much for having me here. This is so exciting. So exciting. I'm excited to be here. Well, it's good to have you back. I thought maybe after your first appearance you'd be a little grumpy and... No, no, not at all. Why would it be grumpy? Well, you seem to really dislike Chris. It's just... Well, I don't want to go down that path. I upset that young man. Anyway, uh... Well, we this time we brought you back. Last time we talked about Batman. Yep, uh, the Dark Knight. Right. You really, okay. you really enjoyed the Dark Knight Rises. Enjoy it. I still watch it on my iPad. Well, that's good. This time uh, we do this weekly thing on our show, Barney, where we go over the Gallup numbers. Uh, what? Well, we look up poll results. Okay. Uh, well, right. the current poll results to see where the election stands. Okay. If the election would be held today, who's in the lead, yada, yada, yada. Well, we figured, who better to talk about this than a congressman? And no other congressman than myself, right? Well, Barney, take it away. Do the Gallup for us this week. All right. uh, uh, First and foremost, thank you, Brian, for having me here. Thank you. Uh, It's a real treat. It surprisingly is. Um, Now, uh, we're doing the weekly Gallup uh, poll check, right? Brian, normally I don't lower myself to this level. Uh polls are so below me. Uh, no pun intended. Okay. Okay, so anyway, alright, alright, alright. Barack Obama's approval rating is 49%, with a disapproval of rating of 45%, Brian. It's pretty close. It's within the margin of error, isn't it? Uh, among, this is interesting, though. This is very interesting. Uh, among registered voters, Obama has a 47%. And get this, Brian, yeah. Romney has a 47%. So, Barney, take Gallup poll. Oh, hang on a second. Take poll? <laughs> Brian, do you know me? I will take any poll. 
So it's a dead heat right now. It's a dead heat. You know what that means? That means the next debate's going to be pretty important? No, I was saying if that actually happened in the election, I mean, Congress would uh, select the president of the United States. Oh, well, or the Supreme Court, as we've seen before, right? Uh, yes. I don't like talking about that. Anyway, let's talk about likely voters, Brian. Okay, Bernie. What, what exactly is a likely voter? I would guess it's someone who's likely to vote. Oh, yeah, sure. Whatever that means. Okay, so among likely voters, uh, Romney has a uh, 50%. And uh, Barack Obama has a surprising low 46%. Oh, jeez. Does that, Does that look good it? for the president? Well, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, this president, uh, well, I love him, but... Well, yeah, I mean, he's part of your party. Well, not only that, I mean, I, I love men. <laughs> That's right. Well, sometimes people might forget that you were the first openly gay senator. What? Right? No, uh, but I have never in my career... In the House have run for Senator of Massachusetts. Oh, forgive me. A congressman. Openly gay congressman. My term is not over until January 1st of 2013. Well, oh, so then you're retiring. Yes, yes. I'm right. sorry. That, that's where the confusion Me and my husband have a bungalow in Puerto Rico. It's, oh, my God. Is it, are you, you should see the behan- banana hammocks there. <laughs> So is that where you're going to be retiring to? Oh, yes. We got a nice bungalow in Puerto Rico. It's, it's really nice. We can take a boat to uh, San Juan. Oh, Brian, I wish you could just come with us. And, you know, do you like banana hammocks? Because it, it's all banana hammock. That's that's the uh, that's the dress code. Is the, wait, for the dress code? I figured that was just what we were going to s- be sleeping in. Am I confused what a banana hammock is, Congressman? Oh, Brian. <laughs> A you know, banana hammock is something where well endowed people put their junk in their pole, and it's like it's, it's it's underwear. It's underwear, Brian. Oh, so oh. So if you got like a really big dick and you still want to show that off, you get a banana hammock. So that's re- that's required dress code at your bungalow. Yeah, yeah. Don't let my over physique fool you. I may be fat and frumpy, but I I wear banana hammocks. Well, I suppose. I'm su- I suppose you could have a lot of private land at your bungalow that you could probably get away with that, right? Get away with what? Wearing your banana hammock around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, dude, Brian, just down the road from my house is an all-new gay beach. Well, sounds like a nice place to retire so you, I can just step off my patio and, There's yeah. banana hammocks everywhere. There's banana hammocks everywhere and lot of balls. So, Barney, back to the election. Okay, yeah, we got a lot of time. We know uh, who you're going to be pulling for in this election. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Be President Barack Obama. Yeah, even though I'm not an official surrogate for the Obama campaign, I can tell you this right now, Brian. Yes. Barack Obama needs to again, like he did in 2008, win the hearts and minds of the uh, the American people. You think he can do that? Uh, time is running out. We have less than a month to go, so... I think he's going to have to do it in the debates. Yeah, debates, shemates. Well, you would you could say that, but President Barack Obama had a large lead before the first debate, and now Romney's evened it up because of his performance. Uh, you know what? Yeah, you want some breaking news, Brad? Sure, Congressman. Back in my day, when I was running for a uh, Massachusetts House seat, yes, I uh, ran into uh, Governor Ryan, and this is probably going to be a minute minute exclusive. For do you, you mean Governor Romney? Did I say Governor Ryan? You did say Governor Ryan. Uh, yeah. Ryan, Rami, tomato, tomato. Anyway, anyway Brett, I, I need to say this. I need to get this off my chest. Okay. I gave Governor Rami oral sex. No, you uh, didn't. I me. gave him oral sex in his private elevator. Did you hear about his private elevator? We've heard about his private elevator. Not cars. his car elevator, but well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I, what matters is that I sucked off Mitt Romney. So take it as he is, folks. I know. You're just throwing that out there before the election. I'm not throwing it out there. These are facts. Okay. You know, if Rami can lie, yeah, I, well, I'm not saying I'm lying, but. Because you said it was facts. Facts. You know, it's good for the goose, Brian. It's good for the gander. All right, Congressman. You know, I. Well, what? No, go ahead. I'm st- no, 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 go ahead. You, you are said, all right, an elected Congressman. congressman. You take the floor, sir. Uh, I'm good. Okay, well, I was going to ask if you had anything more to say on the election. Um. I'm I'm a little nervous. That's about it. Um, nothing else really. Um, All right. So I guess uh, you're saying just wait and see. You think 
the president's gonna pull ahead here. I think, yeah, he's gonna pull again like uh, like 2004. You know, odds are we're probably not gonna know who the president is till probably like three o'clock in the morning. To be honest with you, Brian, wow. it's gonna be so close that they're gonna be they're gonna be counting all night. Well, all right, Congressman. Uh, since you did Batman for us last time, do you have any movie recommendations before oh, you take what? off? No. No. All right. Well, no. maybe. Uh, Brian, when a big you? One... No, I have none. But that's why I was asking you. How about Chris? Is Chris even in here? Chris, I know you were kind of hiding from the congressman, but. Yeah. Um. Actually, yeah. I uh, I saw Prometheus, Brian. Oh yes. Yeah. And you really liked that movie. I liked it a lot. I mean, if you're a, an alien fan and all. Oh, what was that? You said Prometheus. I can't even say Prometheus. What the fuck is Prometheus? Some, some sci-fi bullshit. Again, Brian, I, I don't know why he's here. I don't know why you have him. The kid's fucking dumb. What, what the fuck is Prometheus? Do you know? It's a film. It has something to do with the Alien movies. That's about all I know. Alien. Alien. You know, we're talking about fucking presidential fucking election. Gal pulls. And this bastard wants to talk about aliens and Prometheus and stealing fire and shit. Did Prometheus steal fire? Yeah, Sure, Congressman. Yeah, you know, I gotta go. This is dumb. All right, well, Congressman, it's always good to have you. Thanks for having me, Brian. Odds are I probably will not be back. All right, well, if we hope you do stop by again sometime. If I not, told you, Brian, I probably will not be back. Well, okay. Then in that case, enjoy your retirement in banana hammocks. Oh, and do call me up on that whole bungalow. We'll see about invite. it. You bring a friend, Brian. That'd be great. Bring them all. Well, you, what, maybe you could have Chris. Maybe Chris would like to go instead. I... Uh, well, well, we'll talk about this later. All right, Congressman. We'll see All you right, later. Brian. You have a good night now, okay? Or day. Or you just have a good week. How about that? Thanks, Congressman. Goodbye. I want you, I mean this sincerely, just close your eyes and imagine. Imagine what the Romney Justice Department will look like. Imagine when his senior advisor on constitutional issues is Robert Bork. Imagine the recommendations for who is likely to be picked as Attorney General or the head of the Civil Rights Division or those other incredibly important positions of justice. Imagine, and I mean this, this to me is one of the most critical issues in this election. Imagine what the Supreme Court will look like after four years of a Romney presidency. Folks, This election, in my view, is a fight for the heart and soul of America. Well, Chris, that was uh, another show in the books. Yeah, Brian. Mark it, sign it, deliver it, do whatever you gotta do. Yeah, I know. I mean, we can't... We're not doing them as often as we could, but... No, I, I got baby coming. You got... Well, you have other priorities. Hey, I tell you what, though. You, you What's know, that? People want to give us money. Hey, yeah. We do the show. That's not a bad idea. We do the show every day. That's not a bad idea at all. Folks, yeah, uh, like PBS, if you want to donate. Well, no, if it was PBS, we'd be getting government money to do this. Oh, but yeah. I think we're way past the threshold of bad ever happening. I think we might be. So, Especially if you know who gets elected. But that's the story for another day. That's the story for another day. But those of you that are still listening, we're so happy to have you. Yeah, we appreciate it. We, uh, we like it. We love it. We had fun this week. No interview this week. Nope. Um, well, I mean, when the congressman was here, I mean, he just took up all the time that we had for any kind of thing. I don't even want to go there. That, fucking, that guy hates my fucking guts. I know he does, but hey, it's a big deal. When we get the congressman in here for the Mitten Men show. Yeah, I guess it is. So I guess, why not make me a whipping boy and ridicule me all you want as long as we get publicity, right? That's true. true. And there is one other thing that I know we both wanted to talk about before we get out of here. What's that? That uh, is our Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Mitten Men Show, or is it the Mitten Men? It's just the Mitten Men. Okay, yep, Facebook. Facebook. We got followers on there already. Uh, so, yeah, the Facebook page, a lot of you have joined already, but you need to join. There's always good conversation going on there. We'd like yeah. to have more. A lot more, because... A lot of people select on emails. We figured maybe Brian, I just wish, would be easier. I wish I could just download myself into the computer and just live in Facebook. Well, because go to the Mitten Men Facebook. Well, yeah, that's where I would live, obviously. Yes, so come live with us. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. The Men and Men Show. Come live with us. On our Facebook page. 
And also uh, Twitter. Oh, yes, Twitter. At the Twitter. Mittenmen. Yep. Still got the email. The Mittenmen at gmail.com. The Mittenmen at gmail.com. And, of course, the, uh, the YouTube page. You all know that because that's where you listen to the show right now. Right, exactly. You know I've been using the Mittenmen for my fantasy football? I do know that because I went through the email today and it's just cluttered with... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad the name's getting out there. It is. It's there. It's out. And uh, we're waiting. But we'll be back episode 7. We will we'll be. We're in at the moment, but we'll, we're still going to be You know what, Brian? What's that, Chris? Seven's a lucky number. Ooh. Ooh. So stay tuned for episode 7. We'll see you guys. This was 6. Thanks for listening to the Minute Men. Congressman Barney Frank.